Hi and welcome back. Today we're fault finding on this Mini Cooper SD. So this is the two litre four cylinder diesel engine that's uh, common through many of the BMWs and uh, obviously the higher spec mini diesels. And we have a problem today with, well let me show you. So these are the fault codes that we're seeing. The one I'm going to focus on right now is this. Now this will cause air mass systems uh, problems like that and potentially the back pressure as well. So a lot of these are implausible, not plausible, not plausible. And what happens is the pipe that the gas pressure sensor sits on gets clogged up. I'm show you what I mean. So what we're looking at here, exhaust gas pressure before the turbocharger. And at the moment, that's atmospheric. It's a warm day today, so I'd expect that to be atmospheric. Now I'm just going to start the car. So what I expect to see is that pressure to go up. Now, if that pipe is blocked, it's not going to clear back down to atmospheric very quickly at all. In fact, it's, sitting, it's actually sitting near enough atmospheric, isn't it? So I'll turn the engine off. It, if that was clear, it would drop straight, straight back. So this turbo is of a three cylinder, but the principles are the same. This here is your back pressure sensor. And you can see it goes on this pipe and it goes all the way around the back to the exhaust manifold. Now this gets sooted up. And when it gets sooted up, that gets a reading which is implausible. So this looks like a new sensor to me, very shiny anyway, but down there, if I can get to it down there, when that gets blocked, it's only a narrow pipe. The thing is the main dealer will often quote for the entire exhaust manifold and that because those are stainless steel, that's cast iron. And when you take those out, you can actually destroy the thread. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna to try a cheat. I'm gonna try and get a, a wire down there, like a bicycle brake cable or something. And I'll see if I can make it go out and actually then blow it out with an airline. As it happens, this one is clear because when I put my airline on there, I can actually see the, the dust being blown out through there. So that one is nice and clean. Let's try it on our car here. Fortunately, to get to it, I've got to take this off and the intake off and some of this gubbins. That pipe doesn't look very good. But uh, let's have a look. I'll strip it down and we'll come back. Right, we have now gained access to our little monster here. So if we look at this, it is full of carbon. And look in there, if I can get the angle right, it's pretty much full of carbon as well. So I'm going to try and blow it out to start with. Let's just see what happens. Right, that's blocked. That is completely blocked because the air's going nowhere. I'm having some success in rodding this. It's not on a drill. I'm just trying to push it down gently uh, with a pair of pliers. But it's quite a long pipe and I'm not really getting it far enough at the moment anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some petrol in there, a solvent anyway, just a little bit to fill this up to see if I can soften that carbon that's down the bottom. So you can see now I've got a bit of petrol in there. It's not really going anywhere. I'm just going to let it soak for a little bit and try rotting it as well. It, I just don't want to take this thing off. It's just, just going to be a massive job to strip this whole engine and I might end up stripping threads in the exhaust manifold as well, and I don't want that either. I actually managed to get all that down, which has got to be nearly there, isn't it? And with my airline, I'm now passing air. I mean, it's not, it's not all there, but I am getting something. So I think it's a bit time for a bit more petrol in, see if I can soak it a bit more. I think we're getting there. Okay, so now we I've filled this back up again and it is going slowly. And this is completely clear. So when I blow that, you can see it goes straight through. There's no restriction whatsoever. On this one, I'm now getting 
you hear that? It gets some. It gets some. Which I think is a, which is getting there, isn't it? It's getting somewhere. I'm going to leave that on for a bit. Kate, some flexible wire. Now this is more like the brake cable that you find on push bikes. Now somebody crackhead stole my push bike, so I didn't have any. But I managed to find this. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if it goes in any easier. It's a lot more flexible, certainly. Actually, it really does. Oh, hit corner. So now what I've got, I do have air flowing through there now. I mean, it's not the same kind of flow rate as on the other turbo, but we do have the catalytic converter downstream of this and the pistons obviously the other end so it's not necessarily going to have the same flow rate so i'm going to put the thing back together now and see if we get a better reading another test actually is to try and fill it with fluid and if it drains quickly or fills up then we'll know won't we so that's that's draining i think we're there right so let's see what we've got cars back together and i'm going to start the car and then look at the diagnostics so first i'm going to do a quick test we have one fault but it's got nothing to do with our engine it's there to do with the equalizer I don't know why all right let's go back and look at our live data drive dme uh, diagnostic request we need Right, so now we're running just over atmospheric, so 1,064 hectopascals. I'm going to stop the engine, and that should drop pretty quickly, but almost immediately back to 1024. So that, I think, tells me that that uh, pipe is now clear. Let's try that again. So we're 1141 now. Stop the engine straight back so that little trick has saved probably a day's worth of stripping potential stripping of threads and expensive parts and what did it take a bit of ingenuity thanks for watching